Hey, welcome back. This is part four of the FMOD and Unreal video series. Following on from the integration and footsteps we've already put into our game, this video we're going to be putting ambience and different scatter effects into the scene. So let's jump straight back into FMOD and have a look at the footsteps that we made. Let's tidy this up a little bit and put these footsteps under a character folder. Just drag these two in there. And we'll set up a new folder for ambience. Okay, there we go. So for our ambience, let's set up a 2D event because we don't want it to be directional, we want it to be all around us. Drag that under ambience and assign that to the master bank as usual. Press control three again to load up your audio bin. And we'll be putting in the wind base, which is exactly what it says on the tin. So let's rename this wind base. There we go. And let's make this the loopable region. So you'll hear now that this should loop. It's designed to loop. Oh, that didn't actually quite loop properly. That's a bit strange. Let's just try that again and make sure that's working. There we go. Now works fine. OK, great. In order to add some accent to it, let's add another audio track. And we'll call this Howling. So for this one, we're going to use a scatterer instrument. Drag that out the full length. OK, so this is a little bit different. So inside here, let's add an event instrument. And this will allow us to automate the scatter sounds without actually automating the entire thing as it goes along the timeline. So it will be individual scattering automations. So load it up and it loads up in a separate tab. Go into our audio bin and drag in wind howling. Let's add automation to the volume. And we will automate it with a kind of similar amount of attack and release, just so it fades in and fades out so we get those nice accents that are just appearing every now and then. Let's have a listen. And you'll see the volume moving up and down in accordance to the automation below. This is going to be relatively rough, by the way, but you can take more time over this if you so wish. OK, that sounds pretty good. So let's go back to ambience. And you'll see at the bottom, now we can adjust certain parameters associated with this scatterer instrument. Let's change the polyphony down to three or four. So this will be how many possible samples we'll play over the top of each other. You can randomize the pitch straight off the bat. And we'll do that around the four. And we'll also randomize volume slightly. Spawn total infinite, we want it to run indefinitely. And here we can adjust how fast the spawn speed might be. So we stretch out the maximum time to around 20 seconds and 500 milliseconds for the short. At the bottom, we've got scatter a distance. This will really make the sounds come, and, come into the foreground and the background. So we'll make this a kind of, just in the background, quite a wide bracket. And let's have a listen. You'll see the three lines there. That's actually three bits of the audio playing at once, but at different pitches and volumes as per the par parameters below. Let's just adjust this a little bit more and give it slightly longer attack time so it fades in. There we go. That probably sound a little bit better. Let's double check that. Let's have a listen now. Yeah, that sounds much more like the wind rolling in from a distance. OK, so let's add some wildlife to our scene. Let's add another audio track and insert another scatterer instrument. Pop that in, drag it out. And next, we will drag in our seagull, our seven seagull samples. So these will be randomized in the scatterer instrument. Just drag them straight in. And again, we will adjust the parameters here. So let's get the polyphony down to, let's say, four. Infinite spawn total. Let's randomize the pitch. And of course, randomize the volume as well to about that. And if we move over to the distance, the scatterer distance, we'll drag that out with quite a large bracket so they can sound close to you, like they're almost like they're flying around. 
and there's some in the distance in the cliffs. So it all makes sense when we go back into our scene shortly. Okay, let's take a listen. You can see the individual playheads playing on each sample there. So let's see what it sounds like in the mix. Oh, that wind bed's quite loud. Let's bring that down. And you can just hear the seagulls in the background. Okay, good. Sounds great. Let's save and build. Just give it a second. That's taken a while. Okay, so I mean, this is basically building the ambience that we need for our scene. So let's jump over to Unreal. Now, as it's a 2D audio effect, we just need to drag it in, but we need to find it first, obviously. So let's just search for ambience. Oh, ambience, there we go. And all we need to do is drag this into our scene. And there it is, it's in there. And now just double check on the right hand side, if you just let's open up this a little bit, a little bit more. Okay, just um, scroll down, double check that auto activate is on, just to make sure that it triggers the sound when the game starts. Okay, so that's already on, so we don't need to click that. It's usually on by default, so let's move that back and we'll play the game. There you go. So we have our footsteps from before and they change on surface and the ambience is playing. The footsteps are probably a little bit too loud in the mix. We can, Obviously we haven't added anything like reverb or anything like that to any of these samples just yet, but let's just turn those footsteps down a touch. And you could turn each of these individually by their own volumes, but it's best that we just go straight into that event and turn the entire volume down. That's about, about minus six should do the trick. Do it for stone and snow. That should sound a little bit better in the mix now. Save and build. Let's just check. Yeah, build. And let's have a quick listen now. Let's let that save. Okay, now let's go. Much better. Not so in your face. Okay, sounds good. So that's the kind of that's a base ambience that's in the background. It would be nice now to have a sound for the sea over here and maybe some more gusts of wind as the wind is rushing through those cliffs. So how can we go about doing that? Right, back into F mod. And this time we'll insert a 3D event. So you'll be able to hear this depending on proximity. And we can adjust the dist distance parameters in a second. So let's type in C. Drag that under ambience. Get into our audio bin. Look for our C loop and drag this in. Lovely, there it is. Make it the loop region and just check that it loops. It's quite loud. Very nice. Sounds like the C to me. Okay. So we also need to change the minimum and maximum distance that you can actually hear the sound. So this will obviously attenuate it the further you get back. Let's keep it relatively wide so you can hear it far away, but louder as you get closer. Right. Okay, so we also want some howling wind. So we'll add another instrument and we'll do something similar to the nested event that we had in the other ambience that's over the background. That's a good thing about wind is if you randomize it, it shouldn't get any weird phasing issues. It should sound quite nice. So we'll go into the nesting instrument, drag in our wind howling as last time, pop that in, add automation. You should know how to do this by now. And we'll do something a little bit, a little bit like that. Maybe a straight, oh, straight up and down. Perfect. And let's, let's go ahead and adjust some of the parameters. So we'll change the spawn interval speed. 
Okay, that's about right. And we'll also obviously change the scatter distance as well. And we'll keep it further back than before. Polyphony of around three, so we don't get too many layers. Randomize the pitch big time this time, so we get some more high pitch squealing in the background would be quite cool. Let's have a listen. Can't really hear that there. Let's just see what's going on. That's quite quiet, and we'll bring it up a bit. Okay. Right, so the wind just cut off there. You may not have heard that, but it was definitely audible. And the reason probably isn't because of this. The reason's probably because of the automation that we put on it. So let's just shorten the automation curve just a touch. And that should avoid some horrible tail cutoffs. Just to turn it up a bit. Okay. Let's assign that to the master bank. And go up and save and build. So that's going to push it over into Unreal. Okay. Let's go back into our game and now we should see C. All we need to do is place it somewhere, somewhere slightly out to sea. We'll drag it here, just move it quite central. That looks good. And let's get in there. Now, if you have headphones, you can probably hear the seas coming from your left now. Go get some spatialization and, and a location to where the actual sound is coming from. In this case, it needs to be the sea. So you should hear that the closer we get, the louder it is. And you'll hear it in the right speaker there. And as we move away, so does the volume of the sea. Great. So there's one other thing we can quickly do whilst we're here. There are some fire pits based around this level. So let's make a new event. And we'll name this fire. And assign to master bank. Put it under ambience. I know it's not more, it's not really an ambience, it's more of an object, but that's fine. For this project, just drag in fire, make it the loop region. And that's a lovely, crisp fire sound. Probably slightly too loud, but we'll just change the min and max distance. We only want to hear it when we get relatively close to the fire, so let's say that's about right. And you'll notice that these parameters here change the 3D preview top right, which kind of shows the sphere of activity of the event, kind of how far, how close you need to be in order to get the volume. So let's save and build as usual and go into our scene, find these fire pits. We've now got fire down below. So let's place fire on the fire. You could associate this with the actual fire blueprint, but in this case, let's just add this to each fire pit. We'll just do three of them for now. And let's have a go. Let's see if we can hear some fire. Lovely. Looks toasty in this cold, frigid landscape. So we have footsteps, we have ambience, we have various emitters put around the scene. And that's pretty much all we have time to do for the ambience for FMOD. In the next video, we will be creating a music system within FMOD. And you can either jump straight over and watch that video, or you can go over to the Y side of things and see how creating an ambience compares in that piece of software.